Um, but uh, the next three weeks here, this week and the next two weeks, is we're going to do a little mini series on thankful. Um, the you know, of course, it's Thanksgiving. It's November, and we got Thanksgiving coming up. Well, why is that? Why do we have a national holiday that you know all the banks are closed, all the government offices are closed, all the most businesses give that day off as a as a paid holiday? You know, why is it that we've taken all this time and spent all this money and all this energy within our economy to have this day of Thanksgiving? And it's not by accident. It's because the Spirit of God has moved on men in decades past, in centuries past, that they, that they need to be thankful to Him. And the reason why that moved on them is not only because the Spirit of God put that in their heart, but they were reading their chapter every day and they started reading the Word of God and they saw where they needed to be thankful. And they said, well, let's, let's extend this not only to us, you know, our little home or our little congregation, but let's extend this on to our state and to our nation, that we need a day of the whole, the entire uh, nation being thankful to God for what He's done uh, in the past and what He's going to do in the future. And so we wanted to uh, spend a couple weeks here talking about being thankful because it's a it's a, a integral part of our faith. That thankfulness is a part of of how our faith works, and so we we were. You know, did that whole eight-week series on on uh, faith works, and it's important that we understand that there's so many elements to that. We could have went on for another eight weeks and just kept exploring all kinds of different things. But thankfulness, being thankful, is a crucial point of our uh, corresponding action. So we talked about James, and James says, the book of James. James uh, writes, he says. Faith without works is dead. Well, what does he mean, works? He's calling, he's calling us to have corresponding action to our faith. That when we apply our faith to some specific thing, that we now start acting accordingly. We start planning accordingly to what our faith is and what we're believing for and what we see in the Word of God that belongs to us and now we want to receive those things and now we need to have corresponding action. Well, the, the main area is what we say out of our mouth. That's a big part of our corresponding action. We've got to start speaking right words. But another area is being thankful. is just thanking God and praising Him for the answer, for the provision, for whatever we're believing for before we ever see it coming. And thankfulness is, is, uh, is important. So today I would, I would uh, put a subtitle, you know, Thankful is the, is the series. But today I want to talk about when and where, or excuse me, when and what, when are we to be thankful, and what are we to be thankful for? And so I think this will help us to understand the, the principle and the concept of thankfulness, of being thankful to God. So let's get in your Bible. Let's go to Colossians 3 and 15. Are you there? Not yet. I just told you to go there, didn't I? Colossians 3. Now, um, let's go up to verse 12. I just can't help myself. I you just sometimes the Word of God is so rich that you, you don't want to let out any of it. And, so you can just read on forever. But let's just start in verse 12, and we'll get down to verse 15 here. It says, Therefore, as the elect of God, who's the elect of God? Take your finger, point it at yourself, and say, that's me. I'm the elect of God. I I'm the, I'm the, I'm, have received salvation. I'm delivered. I'm, I'm born again. I'm a follower of Christ. I am the elect of God. Amen? It seems like, well, who are you to say you're elect? You know, you're God's precious little child, huh? Yes, I am. I'm God's favorite. I'm sorry, but he, I'm, I am. I'm His favorite. And if you're born again, you're His favorite too. And He will spoil you. He will love on you. He will pour Himself out into you. His mercy and His grace and His goodness are available to you. 
But you've got to stand up and say, this is who I am. I am the elect of God. Anyhow, that has nothing to do with what we're preaching today. Verse 12, he says, Therefore I am the elect of God, or as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Whew. That's who you are. That's your DNA. You're holy and beloved. And you go, I'm so far from holy, it's ridiculous. This is what God says about you, not what you say about you. What you say about you is counterproductive to what God says about you. Now get your mouth going and start saying what He says about you. You are holy and beloved. Put on tender mercies. If you're, if you're the elect of God and you're holy and beloved, then what do you need to be doing? You need to be putting on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, and long-suffering. These are the attributes, the characters, characteristic of the child of God. Verse 13, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. Now there's a standard. You want to know how, how, much, how far forgiveness goes? Just determine how, how far Jesus went to forgive you, and that's how far you need to go with other people. There's a standard for you. Verse 14 says, But above all, of all, but above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. I love that description of love. This is, we want to be like God, perfect, complete, lacking nothing, then we need to put on love. Love is not something that, that is just a feeling. Love is a choice. It's what we put on. But verse 15, finally we get there. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. And I love this, how it, you get this whole verses, you know, these four verses or whatever it is, 12 through 15, and you get all these verses talking about all kinds of things, and oh, by the way, be thankful. So we can add that to all the list of everything else that, that we read in the earlier verses. Be thankful. So it is not a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's not a, um, if the conditions are right, you can be thankful. It is be thankful, period. There's no, if, there's no uh, qualifications to it. There's no um, uh, if, you know, be thankful if this or that. Be thankful when things are just right, when everything's doing good. Then give God thanks. No, it's be thankful, period. You need to decide, I am going to be thankful no matter what. All right, let's, the uh, New Living Translation uh, says in this, it says, and always be thankful. Uh, I like that add-on of a few extra words there. Always be thankful. Because we need to understand that thankfulness is not something that we do when, when, when things are good in our favor, when things are happening that we like, or when, things are, when people are acting right and situations are coming out the way we expect and everything's working out good. No, thankfulness is to be thankful always, all the time. Let's go to Ephesians 5 and verse 20. Wow, just back up one page. How do you like that? Nope, a few more. I only got into Philippians. I need to get back to Ephesians. Got to back up one more book. Ephesians 5 and what did we say, verse 20. Again, I could back up to verse 15 and start there, but we'll stay in verse 20. It says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father, to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, this giving thanks always is a crucial part to the demonstration of our faith. How, how do we... Our faith can be really raw or really grainy, really... Um, like an artist could paint a picture and they could take... Uh, you know, just some chalk or some charcoal, and they could do a little outline of the painting. And it, it, would, be, it would be there, the image would be there. We would know it was a person, or it was a flower, or it was a, a puppy dog, or it was a landscape, or we'd know what the picture was just by that rough sketch. And we know that uh, a lot of the great artists, you know, that, that they would do sketch after sketch after sketch before they actually painted the, 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 
the uh, final product, you know, before they made their masterpiece that now we look back and go, wow, this is a masterpiece. And we we have some of those sketches available for Michelangelo and, you know, all, I can't, you know, I'm not a, a real art buff, so I don't know all those names. Um, but But those sketches showed the picture. And so our faith can be like that at the beginning when we're young, when we're when our faith is raw, even even if we've been in the, the church and been born again for decades, in some area, our faith can be very raw, very sketchy. very It's there. We know what the outcome, we know what we're believing for. But if we want to polish it and we want to get it developed to where we can have a, a finished picture, a finished product, then we need to start adding on all these different elements to our faith. And one of them is the corresponding action of thankfulness. We need to put on thankfulness as though it were something that that by purpose we choose it and we put it into our life. We say, I'm going to take this thankfulness and I'm going to apply it and put it into my daily life. I'm going to put it into my day timer. I'm going to put it into my planner. I'm going to put it into my schedule that I'm going to have this, this act of thankfulness as a regular part of my life. I'm not just going to be thankful when everything's going well and everything looks good but no I'm going to be thankful even when things aren't looking good when things don't seem to be coming together when it seems like God kind of like did you forget about what I'm believing for like sometimes you you, you start a faith project like you're really going to believe for something and, and you know it's, it's really exciting in your heart you're really pumped up about it you start putting some action to it you get your mouth right you start talking right and you start really you know uh uh, taking the right steps and doing all the stuff, and then it just seems like everybody forgot about it. It's like, Lord, did you forget about what you put in my heart to do and how you, you know, you really put it in me to believe for this? And and this is when faithfulness, this is when thanksgiving, this is when diligence, this is when patience, this is when all these attributes of faith need to start coming alive. And now we start. Okay, I had a rough sketch, now I need to start polishing it. I need to start putting some finish to it. And one of the areas is thankfulness. That we start thanking God for the outcome before the outcome ever comes. Because faith is, is seeing the picture, the final product, before we actually see it, before we actually have it. That's what faith is. If we have it and it's there, it's manifested, then there's no need for faith anymore. Faith is done. We don't need faith anymore because we have it. Faith is when we're believing for something that's not here yet. All right? And I, I don't mean, I, I wasn't intending to teach about faith again, just the way it's coming out, the way the Lord's bringing this out to us, is that thankfulness is an important element of, of our everyday life if we will be diligent to use it. It's a, it's a tool. It's a, just as, Hate, um, distrust, um, you know, I'm trying to think of what, everything else that I want to say here. Satan will use those things. He will use your distrust for someone, your dislike of someone. He will use that to put a wedge between you and separate you from that person. Well, God uses thankfulness, goodness, love, compassion, patience, all that to bring people together. For, to draw people into your life that you have no idea that they're the answer to what you're believing for. That they are the, the product of your faith. That they are the ones that will bring about that word to you. That, you know, they may even be non-believers and yet God through them will use them to bring about a word to you, a, 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 an understanding, a message to you about something. And you go, wow, I, you know, you're, you're expecting some miraculous angel to show up and you know, the, the cloud to spread and God to speak and the oh, the us shall do do and this is what you're going to have and all that. And yet it'll be some of the, some of the uh, most unexpected areas, the unexpected ways, and God will bring that and He'll bring that revelation to you and now you step up and you go, okay, now I have some finish. I have some, some uh, polish to my faith and now I have that next thing, that next uh, step of... Um, corresponding action that next work that next thing that I need to do so that I can now move along in my faith to receive the final thing and they'll come from 
crazy places. I mean, crazy people. I, I, I've, I, I'm trying to remember of a, of a specific event, a specific time, but there's, there's been so many of them that somebody in a store, a cashier, or a, or a guy pumping gas, I, I'm trying to remember what, what the situation was, but I remember a guy pumping gas, and it wasn't even here locally, it was somewhere else, and there was something said, and it, it had nothing to do, you know, it had everything to do with the situation and, and what was going on, but it, but it spoke to me about another situation, another thing that I was believing for, and the Lord just used that to remind me of my faith, to remind me what I was believing for, and to get back up, to keep that switch of faith on, to, keep, to get back up on my faith, Sometimes we, we take an, a something that we're believing for and we wrap our faith around it. And then we stand on that and we get our patience to come up with us. And, and we really, wow, we're really talking about faith a lot. And, um, but, but this is how, we, how life is. This is what life is, the Christian life is all about. And, and we get to where we start peeling back the, the faith from it so that we can look at it again and we pull our faith back and then it start, we start sabotaging ourselves, and yet then the Lord will send someone. And if we're, and if we're, uh, if we dislike people, and we just kind of not walk in thankfulness for somebody that doesn't seem like they're, that they're something that we should be thankful for. Like they're, they seem to be a negative influence in your life, and, and we're not thankful for them, and, and so we kind of push them off at arm's length, and we miss out on what God has to. To, is intending to use them for and to come. But if we'll be thankful and we'll apply love and we'll walk in these things and we'll do all the stuff that we were talking about in Colossians in those verses and we'll be that character and we'll have that character of a, of a believer and, and we'll allow people to, to minister to us, they'll come off with stuff you never expected. Um, when we started Faith Connection, we had a... Um, Six months before we launched, we had a, a, a wise counsel team that we put together of some people, and they really didn't know what they could say to us or encourage us or whatever, but we would just get together with them once a month. We'd tell them what we've been doing and what's going on, and, and, they would, and we'd ask them to just tell us what they thought, and, 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 and they would come off with stuff, and they would, they would think that they didn't do anything, and yet to us, it was igniting our faith. I remember the incident. I was at my dentist, who's a little lady, and but boy, she can really crank you. You know, she can put the hurt to you if she wanted to. But um, she, we were telling her about, you know, when we before we started Faith Connection, I was telling her about it. She says, and it was like, at the time, it was it was a, a chore. You know, my mind was, my head was down. I was so focused on Faith Connection and putting it together. I didn't, even, I don't even think we knew what it was called yet, and, and just working on that. And my, and it was like just a burden, a, a task, something I had to do and something I had to work on. And, and she said to us, you know, telling her about what we were doing and all that, and she says, well, that's exciting. And it, and it just like, it lifted my head, it lifted my spirit, and God put it, that, that revelation in me, it is exciting. It is something good. And it got my head up to where I was looking to him. I wasn't looking down at the, at the junk and all the stuff that had to be done, but I was looking unto him and I was thankful to him for what he had called us to do. And, and she lifted me up. And here's, you know, my dentist. You know, you never know where this is going to come from. But if you're not walking in thankful, if you're not thankful for the people that are in your life, even though they may not be the greatest people that you really like, you need to be thankful for them. Amen. That's a rough one right there. Sometimes you go, well, I don't be, you know, because there's a name, there's a face that pops up in your head when I talk about these things. And you go, I really don't want to be thankful for that person because they hurt me. They did this. They did that. They're always not nice to me. They've always sabotaged me. They always steal my ideas. And they always, you know, whatever. They always do all these things. And yet we need to be thankful. Thankfulness is a, is a product, a force, a, oh, how do I want to say this? Thank you, Lord. It's a, it's a commodity. It's a, it is a spiritual force. Just as faith is a spiritual force, as love is a spiritual force, thankfulness is a spiritual force. And we need to apply it into our life. We need to take it and use it in our life and be thankful for 
for what God is doing. Even when life is all messed up, even when stuff's not going right, we need to be thankful. Not thankful for the situation. Well, let's, let's go on here to 1 Thessalonians. I think it'll, it'll bring it out to us. 1 Thessalonians 5. Starting in verse 16. Now we could, we could say, rejoice always. We go, oh yes, amen. We need to be rejoiceful. You know, of course. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Well, yes, of course. That's what good little Christians should do. Pray always. Always be praying without stopping, without ceasing. Verse uh, 18, in everything give thanks. Well, I don't know about everything. Come on, everything? In everything give thanks. Please. Everything? Even when, you know, you're running along the road in a flat tire, you know, tire blows and now you're flat, give thanks for that? No, he didn't say to give thanks for the bad stuff. He said give thanks in it. There's a difference. He's not instructing us to give thanks for the problem, for the misery, for the suffering, for the, you know, when, when life is just all messed up, when people that, you know, you're trying to work with and you're, having relationships with and they just go I'm done I don't want to have nothing to do with you no more you know when finances don't work out give thanks when the bill comes that you weren't expecting and it's not a small one give thanks for that no give thanks in that that's the difference it's not giving thanks for the problem but it's giving thanks in spite of the problem because we've got to have a, an element of our faith that is that we know God is good we believe that He's on our side, that He's at work to our benefit. All things work together for those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. Scripture after Scripture tells us these things. So how do we give thanks in the midst of the junk, in the midst of the problem of you know the bad doctor's report, the whatever? This is how. Verse 18, it says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, for you. Point at yourself and say, that's me. You know, he's talking to you. This word of God, we declared that before the, before the message. This is God's word and he's talking to me. When? Today. He's talking to you right here. Verse 18, he's talking to you personally. He's talking to me personally. All right, let's read it again. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What's the will of God for you? To give thanks in all things. So what does that mean? Like, how do I give thanks when, when everything is like really horrible? When, just remembering that uh, we had a vehicle accident, got totaled, or not totaled, but the uh, guy ran into Dan and just side swiped him. So you've been what, four months? Just dealing with that? From insurance companies to to uh, rental cars, to uh, the body shop, to all this stuff, just craziness going on and on and on. And it, how do you be thankful in that? How do you be thankful when something happens in your life and it's not your fault? You know what I mean? How do I, give, how do I be thankful for that person that came into your life because of that? How do I be thankful to God because of, of this situation? Well, it's not being thankful for the problem, but it's being thankful that for God that He's on the scene, that He's at work in the situation, that He's going to bring it out to be to your good, to your benefit. Had did that, uh, would you rather not gone through that? Well, of course. It's like no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Scripture tells us. Who's making these weapons against you? The enemy of your soul, Satan. He is doing everything he can to create some circumstance, some situation, some weapon that he can affect you, that he can knock you off your faith, that he can knock you off your, your, your love walk, that he can push you out of being the child of God to being, um, what would that scripture say? I just read it in Colossians. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible You're, that 
just that quick. Whoops, going the wrong way. Just at the backup. The elect of God, holy and beloved. The elect of God. So how, you know, when, when you're knocked off of that and you go, I don't know that God even knows that I'm, that I'm born again. I don't even know if God really loves me. I don't know if, if this, this whole Christian thing is really worth it, you know, because all this st bad stuff's happening. So how is this stuff working? This is where your faith in God. Remember, what did Jesus tell us to do? Have faith in God. Right? Well, how do you do that? This is the element. This is one of the elements to it. And that is to be thankful in the situation. Not for the situation, but thankful in the situation. When you're in the midst of all the junk. When you're in the midst of, of just carnage. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. When just life just throws it at you. When the enemy's weapons are just lined up on you and he's just blasting away at your life. And he's doing everything he can to create chaos. Remember the, the insurance commercials for the, what, what is this chaos, isn't it? That mayhem. And, you know, he, he, it's, it's funny how, you know, just stuff happens and you're, it's not your, you know, it's not your fault. It's not your, you didn't have nothing to do with it. And it was the latest one. It's about cats or something. And just craziness. Anyhow, but that's how life happens. It's so, so much happens to us that is not our, um, it's not of our own doing, it's not of our own making, it's not because we, we sinned or we made a mistake or we did anything, it's just we're alive. And Satan doesn't like you. In fact, he hates you. Why? Because you are the beloved of the God and you are holy and acceptable. You are righteousness. You are favored by God. That's why he hates you. And he's going to do everything he can. He, he, he hates God even more in the best way that he can get at him is to get at his kids. You want to mess with me? Mess with my kids. You know, that, that will jack me up. You know, that'll, that'll mess me up more than if you can mess with me pretty much all, all the one, unless you mess with my lunch or something, then we're going to have a problem. But, you know, you can, you can do all kinds of stupidity to me and I'm, you know, I'll, I'll walk away and maybe not like you so much, but, you know, one thing, but boy, you mess with my wife or my kids, we are going to have a problem, you know, and, and I'll do whatever it takes to take you out. You know, <laughs> it just sometimes you, you, you know, you got to do what you got to do, you know, make you an offer you can't refuse. You know? and, but, but anyhow, the, um, the, when, when life comes at us like that, we've got a choice to make. Either we're going to cave in and go, woe is me, life's really bad, and God doesn't care, and all these things are just happening, you know. Why isn't God doing something? Why, you know, and, and he's like, I'm waiting on you, boy. You're the one with the faith. You're the one that's got to receive. You're the one that's got to pick this stuff up. And now the one way we do that is through thankfulness. In the situation. Not because of the situation, but in it. In the midst of all the, of all the chaos, we give thanks. All right? Amen? So, do we know God's will? A lot of Christians say, how do you know the will of God? How do we figure out what God's will is? You just start reading the Word of God. You start reading the Bible, and you'll find Scripture after Scripture like this where it says, this is God's will for you. And what is God's will for you? To be thankful in the circumstances. Okay. Okay, then that's, is that real hard? Do we, do we really need to complicate that somehow? No, we just say, okay, I'll do what I'm supposed to do, and that is to be thankful in the circumstances. Not because of the circumstances, but in them, I'm going to be thankful because my faith and trust is in Him. My faith and trust is in what Jesus already did on the cross, and my faith and trust is that God will apply that to my life. That the Holy Spirit living in me will guide me and direct me how to come out of this, and I know that when I come out of this, I'll come out better than when I went in. When I go through a circumstance or situation, that I'll come out the other side, if I'm thankful, if I'm patient, if I'm, you know, walking in love, if I'm applying my faith, I know that I'll come out the other side way better off than I ever did when I came into it. And it's not, God's not waiting for a circumstance in order to bless you and to bring you out better. It's just that God will never waste an opportunity if we will stay in faith, if we will continually believe that He's on, you know, 
on our side that He's at work in us and we receive what He's done for us. There's so much to this that, that I can't get it all out. I'm, I'm, my brain's not getting it all put together so I can get it out to you. All right. God's will. We are to always, never, and in all. I like this, this verse here. How it says this. It says, verse 17, Rejoice when? Always. We are to always do these things. Pray when? Without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. We are to never stop. We are never to cease. We are never to back up. Praying always, praying without ceasing, is a, is a, um, it's an application of a spiritual force. It is the, it is the force that we can, that we can uh, apply, that we can, um, well, there's a word there I want. We can uh, apply is, is a good way of saying it. We can, you know, put pressure on a situation by prayer. And, and that pressure, it's like we, we expect prayer to be like, like a one and done, like, like a hitting a baseball with a bat, like crack, it's done. We're just going to smack this thing out of here. When it's not, it is, prayer is more like the force of water. When water just keeps working on a stone and it just keeps grinding off the edges over time, and that's what, how prayer works. It's a, it's a spiritual force when applied and kept applied, kept, um, uh, um, you know, just, you, you just stay on it, and you just keep applying it. You keep the pressure on, then something will happen. And, and I, um, uh, some fellows told me that you ever go into a, a, a store, and it'll have the little sticker on the door. It says, push. You know what that means? That's an acronym. Pray until something happens. And so it's like pushing a door open. So I'm going to push on this door until something happens, until it opens. Most of the time, it's not a big deal. It just kind of pushes open. Well, sometimes in prayer, things open quickly. Other times, we got to apply some force. And we need to stay at it. Maybe it's not a, a heavy force, but it's just a constant battle, or not battle, a constant pressure, a constant force that we apply in our life is, is the force of prayer. Prayer is, you know, the, the, the how did I hear it said? The least, the lowest form of power on the earth is money, and the highest form of power on the earth is prayer. With prayer, we can accomplish tremendous things. You want to, you want to change your state, you want to change your your city government, you want to change your school system, you want to change your government, you want to change how things are done and what's done, then you need to get the pressure of prayer, the, the force of prayer at work in, in, in keeping your faith and your patience with it, and it will apply, it will cause the result to come in time. And, and Kenneth Hagin always said, if you're willing to stand forever, you won't stand long. You know, if you're willing to stand in faith, to stand and, and, and keep the application of prayer alive and working, and you're willing to stand forever, you won't stand long. Because what if it takes, if you're willing to stand forever and it takes two days, it comes quickly. What, what if it takes two years? Or what if it takes two decades? But if you're willing to stand forever, it won't take long because when it does come, you'll go, well, that didn't take long, even though it may take decades for something to come about. But if you don't keep the prayer, the, the spiritual force of prayer applied, then it's not going to work. It's not going to come. It, it's always... I'm trying to think of how to, how to say this. If you ever have a faith project, you know, something you're really believing for and you're just standing in faith and time, you know, over time, days, weeks, months, whatever, and you're just staying in faith and you're staying hooked up and you're staying diligent to it. And then for whatever reason, you just unhook. You go, okay, this is far enough. I'm, I'm just, the pressure comes, something has to change. You need the money now. The, you need the, the, 
you know, there's pressure involved and you just want that pressure to go away and you just, you know, you just get so much pressure on you, you just give up. And you're at that moment, at that moment is the tipping point of whether you're going to go on and receive what God has for you or whether you're going to step back into failure. Are you going to press in to victory or are you going to step out to defeat? That's your choice. And so when all that pressure is coming, the devil knows that the, the breakthrough is coming. It's right around the corner. It's going to come soon, and so he's pouring it on. He's just bringing everything he can to bear, every weapon he can put against you, and now it's up to you. Am I going to stay in faith? Am I going to stay thankful? Am I going to stay walking in love? Am I going to keep praying? Am I going to keep communicating with God about this situation and keep giving him thanksgiving for it? See, the element of faith is... When we pray for something and we're, we're standing in faith and we say, Lord, I, and we go to God and we, and we pray for something and we say, Lord, I'm believing for this. This is what I'm believing by faith to receive. So what's next? Do I keep praying that same prayer, trying to get God to move on my behalf? No, now I need to go into the faith mode and now I need to stand in faith and now I need every time the situation comes up, now I'm thankful for it. I'm just going to give him thanks and say, thank you, Lord, that that's done. Thank you, Lord, that you're going to provide the finances that we need. Thank you, Lord, that the healing will come. Thank you, Lord, that these things are done and accomplished by faith. You know, if... So many things to talk about. Let's go to Psalms 100. Well, again, we'll just start in verse 1. <laughs> you ready? Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. That verse 3 is a um, um, something we need to remind ourselves of. We didn't, we're not self-made. We're not self-made people. We are God-made. He made us. Anything we have, anything capacity we have, ability we have, talent, skills, finances, healing, health, good relationship, whatever, anything that we have that's good came from Him. It's not something we produced on our own. It's not something, well, I made, I'm a self-made man. No, you're just deceived. Um, know that the Lord, he is, good, he is God. It is He who has made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Can a sheep say, I made myself? No, the shepherd made us. The shepherd made sure that we stayed alive those first few hours of, after we were born. Put those antibiotics into us. I think of uh, today's uh, husband. What do they call it? Animal husbandry. You know how they take care of animals on a farm or in a in a zoo or wherever. They don't survive just on their own. There's too much sickness and disease in this old world that can take a, a small animal, child, whatever out, and they need people to to uh, to get them along. What keeps them fed? What keeps them? It's God that provides everything that we have need of. Verse four. And this is what we should do because of all that. Because he's, we're not self-made men, we're, we're God-made people. And men and women. When I say men, I mean both genders. Um, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. This is what we need to do in response to that. In the response, we know that if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't be. We wouldn't be who we are. We wouldn't be, period. <laughs> you know, I think about if it wasn't God that came into my life, I probably would be dead by now. Because I was doing some really stupid things that if I had stayed on that track long enough, it would have came to destruction. I would have been dead and at a, at a fairly young age. It wouldn't have taken long. 
but yet God showed up in my life and He's the one that made me into the image of Christ. He's the one that made me righteous before Him. He's the one that made me the blessed of God, the favored child of God. He's the one that made me all those things. I have nothing to do with it. All I did was say, okay, I'll take it. I'll receive it. I'll, I'll believe it at face value. And, I'll, you know, not just, you know, we think about faith just being a, a blind faith, just at face value, we just take everything. And it's no, because of, because of what he's done before for me in the past, what I've seen him do for others, now I have a basis for my faith I know that I can trust Him with who I am and what I am. Amen? Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name. That's who we are. As children of God, that's who we are. That's the stuff that we need to be doing is being thankful to Him. Amen? You get anything out of that? Boy, I sure hope so because I got a whole lot out of it. <laughs>